this, in my opinion, is the most wasted time in all of sports. If you don't believe me, as I didn't believe when I heard this, I was like, oh, I'm a great leader, I'm a floor general, I do all sorts of things in dead ball time. If you don't believe me, go home and watch yourself on one game film. Just watch what you do, right? Maybe you talk as you sub in and out and you say who you're guarding, but oh my gosh, is this the most wasted time in sports? When the ball goes out of bounds, add the free throw, add any substitutions, all that stuff, that's dead ball time, okay? Timeouts, what do you do? So, most players do absolutely nothing. They just look around or they think or they, you know, very few players actually maximize this golden opportunity. First thing, I think you should rethink four things. Time, score, fouls, and I'd add to that list, timeouts. So every dead ball, ball goes out of bounds, there's a foul, anything like that, right? Uh, free throw, I'm looking up at the scoreboard, I'm rethinking what's the time, what's the score, What's our foul situations? And always also checking how many timeouts do we have? You never want to be caught in a situation where you get a technical for your team. If you look and you assess time and score, you see, hey, have we been on a run? Have they been on a run? Fouls, I love getting the other team into the bonus. So I could go to the free throw line and shoot two free throws, which I consider a layup, right? So I was always reconsidering those four things. Another thing you want to do is give reminders, give encouragement, right? Maybe you got a player just missed the last couple shots. Give him or her some encouragement. Give reminders before they're needed, right? Maybe you have noticed that they're trapping on the ball screen. So on the next possession, you tell your, your teammate, hey, hey, slip the screen, they're trapping, so be ready for it. Give your players a reminder before it's necessary. This next one is something that I remember watching Michael Jordan do all the time at a free throw. When he wasn't in the lane, right? So when his team was shooting generally and he was out the top of the key, he would always go up to another player, right? And there's so many iconic pictures of him hanging on his shorts, standing shoulder to shoulder, and he would have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a teammate. What do you think MJ was doing in that one-on-one -on -one conversation with the teammate? Yeah, I bet he was giving reminders, giving encouragement, right? Maybe Kerr missed a couple shots and he's giving him encouragement. Hey, you got the next one. Let's go get this next one, right? Maybe he's giving reminders. Hey, Pippen, uh, watch them slipping on that screen, all right? Let's, let's stay home. He was always having one-on-one -on -one conversations with his teammates. He was so competitive. He wanted to win so badly that he was always putting his teammates in the best spots to succeed. Fourth thing I think you can do during dead ball time is treat subs like honored guests. How many of you have a teammate who thinks they should be starting. <laughs> oh yeah, we've all had that teammate, right? And so coach puts up the starting lineup on, on the you know whiteboard in the locker room, right? And they're just flabbergasted, right? They're just, right? Like you can already see it in their mind. They can't believe that they're not starting. They think they should be starting, right? Maybe they were starting or maybe they had a good week in practice so they think they all of a sudden should be starting, right? And they just can't believe in warmups, they're still shook, right? They can't believe they're not starting. Game starts, right? They're, they're sitting on the bench. Play happens. They're not engaged in the game. They're just sitting on the bench like, man, coach is so stupid. What is coach think? He's such an idiot. I should be start. I'm better than two of them. I, I, I should be a starter. I'm, I'm one of the better shooters on the team, right? And they're sitting there. Their mom's in the stands like, hey, why aren't you starting? Right? And they're like, I know. He's an idiot. He's so stupid. Right. Now, when coach finally puts them in the game, do they have any idea of the time, the score, the momentum, the foul situation? No, right? And I know that feeling. You just want to kick them in the spleen because they're an awful teammate. But that's your chance to be a special leader and rise above. And what I like to tell athletes is acclimate them to the environment, right? So if you acclimate to the cold or the warm, you get used to it, acclimate them to the environment. You know, and maybe say something to get their attention. Like they sub in like, Glad he finally put you in. They'd be like, yeah, right? And then you tell them the valuable information. Like, hey, listen, they've scored two in a row. We need to get a good offensive possession. Or, hey, we're in, you know, three on defense. Make sure you got that shooter on the left wing. Get them used to the environment. Get them prepared mentally for what they need to do. Treat them like an honored guest. If you had an honored guest come to your house, right, you'd treat them with respect. You'd make sure they know where everything is. You get them acclimated to the environment. So do the same thing for your teammates. Last but not least, is focus your team forward, right? So often I'll see, especially high school players who think they're leaders just by yelling and telling and screaming at their teammates, a teammate makes a mistake and then they you know, get in a huddle and they yell at them for it. And here's the thing, they know they made the mistake, right? All, all you're doing is focusing their forward, sorry, focusing them backwards, right? As a leader, 
If you can't think of one thing to say, one reminder to give about the next possession or one way to focus your team forward, I don't think you know a lot about basketball and I would say you're a pretty terrible leader. So focus them forward and, if, and I've had many athletes ask, well coach, what about, you know, I'm not the person focusing backward, but what if we get in a huddle one of our teammates you know, does that to another teammate. I would nip that in the bud. I would say, hey, shut up, man. Or I would say, hey, chill, chill. He knows that he did that, or she knows she did that, right? She knows she dribbled off her foot, or he knows he, he passed it out. We're good, let's focus forward. So I would nip it in the bud, and I would get my team focused forward in that huddle. Now, I wanna show a moment of dead ball time that very few commentators, coaches, and athletes talked about in the Cavs and Warriors finals. We all remember the infamous J.R. Smith rebound and dribble out and dribbled out the timeout when they were tied. But what most people don't realize is the leadership opportunity and dead ball time opportunity missed right before that shot. So let me catch you up in case you missed that moment. The Cavs are down, and, and I, I know from a friend of a friend who, who was a, a friends with one of the Cavs assistants, that the Cavs goal was to try to steal, to go into Golden State, try to steal game one. They All their best sets, all their kind of gimmicky stuff, they put into game one, and they're like, hey, we are gonna steal game one. If we don't get game two, that's fine. But we are going back to Cleveland one to one. So they put all their energy and effort into it. And remember earlier in the week, we saw LeBron's response and one of his you know poorer moments as a leader and his uh, mistake response to, to JR when they went into the bench at, you know, between the end of regulation and overtime. But what most people don't realize is the free throw before. So George Hill gets fouled, great free throw shooter. They're down one. He makes the first free throw to tie it up, right? Watch what happens. Watch if anyone talks to JR, any reminders, anything. Just go ahead and watch. So he ties the game, right? They give some dap. No one reminds JR that, hey, we're tied. No one gives really any reminders, right? LeBron says something there to Green, but there's no reminders, right? They, they're they matching up, right? So maybe, I, I, okay, a little bit of reminders, but no one makes sure that JR and Thompson know time and score of, hey, you get offensive rebound, attack, right? You get offensive rebound, draw a foul. Those are all great reminders that could be given. So that's the special part of thinking the game. We want you to get to that deeper level of seeing beyond what the fans are going to see, what even average coaches or players are going to see, and be that special leader that gives reminders before they're needed. And dead ball time is one of the best times to do it because you're not physically doing anything. You're not physically responsible for anything. So your mind should be rolling. You should be maximizing that dead ball time. Hey, it's Mono again, and I trust you benefit from the last three videos we shared. I was a point guard in my career, and early in my career, I didn't know how to think the game, how to lead my team or run the show or help my team to win championships. I discovered all of these things at Point Guard College. And that's why I couldn't be more excited to tell you about a special Point Guard Masterclass that we've created just for you to help you take your game to the next level, to help you stand out to good coaches and to prevent you from falling short of your potential as a player. Regardless of whether you're a point guard or you play any other position, this point guard masterclass is gonna give you every tool you need to help you be at your best. Check out the details below and come join us. I know it'll be a transformational experience for you.